Hello, 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 welcome everyone to Jelab TV. I am JLab and this is Football Manager 2021, the Youth Academy Challenge with Sienna. If you like this kind of videos, be sure to like and share this video and to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. So we're starting our new campaign, our new season. We're in the first league game of the year. We've already done ourselves justice in the Coppa Italia third qualifying round by winning that 3-0. However, there's a few things we want to go over very quickly before we start our first league game against Udinese. In a bit to win just our fifth game out of 15 first league games of our history, which is kind of remarkable when you realise that's the case, but there you go. The first thing I want to talk about is the fact we are now considered to be a rich club. Even if we are predicted to finish in bottom of the table for the third year running, we are now in a good position financially. So yes, we've got 53 million right now. Our training facilities are yet to be completed, that will be done in October, but our youth facilities have been upgraded, which is very, very good for us. Especially now, we have great training facilities, great youth facilities, exceptional academy coaching and exceptional youth recruitment. The facilities are coming on quite nicely, and you'd say maybe three and a half stars for the training in youth facilities at this point, which is very, very good. Now, if only we can get a full stadium and start improving those, because... I want to either get a new stadium or increase the capacity so we can make more and more money from our capacity. We've also got a new affiliate. Now this team, I don't know how to say the name, I'll be honest, but NEC, we managed to convince our board to get a new affiliate and they actually offered this team. They were one of two Dutch teams. The other team was FC Eidenhoven, which was a bit of a shock when I realized, okay, these are pretty big teams considering I know of them. And Eidenhoven and... NEC have been in the Eredivisie as recently as last season for the NEC and FC Eindhoven were there just two years ago so two very recently promoted already get a team to win the Eredivisie to be an affiliate of ours that is good signings for me and I'm curious to see what we can do I chose this team though because they had the better facilities they had good academy coaching adequate recruitment but great youth facilities and good training facilities Compared to Eidenhoven, who had just good training facilities and good and great youth facilities, but adequate junior coaching and adequate youth recruitment. Yes, Tinkrell is also their manager. Hi, Tim. How are you doing? But again, I was just very excited because I felt that we had a decent opportunity here to improve our standings. We also managed to convince the board to actually allow an idea to send academy players to train with us so we can get some of them from our youth intakes, which... Given that we've already got one player that has come from our youth intakes from Tebo Sasena, I'm almost certain that is the case in Havel, who hasn't... I, I look at that, I don't think that's a, a true reflection on his ability. It's more of the fact that we've had the summer break and they've probably not been training as much. But either way, to have this kind of player come through our intake is very, very promising. I mean, we've got a slight drop in tackle ability, but it's fine. But the fact that he is just with us and he came from the city is kind of ironic and kind of nice to say that, okay, this may be an interesting situation to be in. He's only done 156 days since the youth intake, which is literally just how long it's been. But he was born in the city. So for me, it just tells me that we got all of that ability to come through, right? Look at our transfers going out. We did sell... And Zoni, I say sell, he left when his contract expired. I only played him once, and that was about it. I didn't see much more potential from him. Yes, he could be about three star, but honestly, at the end of the day, it's better that he gets a move out, and he's already listed for loan by Issa Virginia, which tells you a lot. So has finally got a loan deal to Pontadere. He's played 10 times for us, though, so it's not like he's a bad player. He's very useful as a substitute when Lenzi was not available. But honestly, now, looking at the players that we got, I don't think he's the worst player to go out on loan. And we've got players that feel like need the game time. And he needs more game time outside of us. So if he gets the game time in the lower leagues, when he's a good player for the lower leagues, it makes sense to let him go out on loan. Marco Mari, I have fears now that this guy is not going to develop as well as I want him to. He is a Liga Pro player. I thought, okay, he's going to be a decent player, but... Feels like during the summer break, after he came back, he just declined randomly. And I don't know why. 
So after helping Padova get promoted to Serie B, I was thinking they might bring him back in. They didn't go back for him for him, and Ordone just was the team that came in and said, okay, we'll take him this time. So this is his fourth club he's out alone with. He's had 107 games with clubs in the third tier, so it's not like he's got a lack of suitors or anything. But we've got him another four years anyway, so let's see what we can do next time, yeah? Giuseppe Toma is also out on loan. Canese has taken him on board. He has the potential. I don't think he's going to be the best player in the world, especially now we've got Oberti doing well. We've got Galardi and Rossi also become, potentially being really good defenders. I think Toma is not going to get the game time, unfortunately for him, especially with all the young players coming through that are younger than him now. He's got another three years left on his contract. I could see him being released or sold in the near future, but that's only if he doesn't improve, which I think he can improve. I just want him to be a Serie B player at least, so he gets a future in the game. We will select Ferresi go out on loan. He's decent, not the best in the world. He can be a left back and a centre back. But we let him go out on loan to Matalika because, well, they asked for him. And he played five times for us last year. I felt it was a good move. Well, I say five times last year, two times last year, three times the year before. But he wasn't getting game time with us. And with how strong, much he was going to struggle to get in game time with the defenders in front, I thought it made sense to let him go out on loan, honestly. Big Genie, again, a goalkeeper that has potential but isn't going to get any game time at the moment because of who is in the club. It makes sense to let him go out on loan as well because of Tortilli and Basilico, between the two of them, that's the goalkeeper in slot just held down 100%. And hopefully this guy can actually improve in his second loan spell. If he can improve, then it's great news. Rodolfi's played five times for us and he's finally got a loan move to Matalika. So another player that's gone to this team. He's got potential, but I don't really use him since he's kind of an inverted winger. I would not use him at the moment. I would only use him as a striker at best. And while he's got potential to grow, I don't really see him being a good player in the future for us, sadly. And that's a shame because at the age of 21, he's kind of wasting his potential with us. Now, Mirko Vatovici has finally got a loan mill. This is a guy I have a lot of hope for that can potentially reach Sotili's level. And while Basilico has proven that a loan move to another club can be very beneficial for your development, I'm hoping this guy can develop at Consenso, who are not a bad team by any stretch of the imagination. I think they were just relegated a few years ago, but they were supposed to be in fifth place. Yeah, they're just relegated a year. We got promoted, actually. So they've been in the promotion hunt ever since to get back into Serie B. Financially, they're struggling a little bit now. But yeah, this team could be good for our goalkeeper to get some game time him for a good cause of trying to get promoted it makes sense to let him go out and loan to them and he's already made an appearance for them so he's definitely gonna be used alessandro miles sees played six times for us but has now finally got a low move outside of our team he's at renete who i think are trying to avoid relegation this year yeah 15 plays expected uh, it's a relegation fight for them and good luck to them honestly i'm hoping that our player gets some game time for them but i just don't see him staying in the team i kind of regret getting him a new contract but again we could sell him on and i feel that low moves are good for him right now we also sold this guy for nothing i didn't see any value in him and yeah i wanted to get some potential future fees for this guy but every club that tried it said no and then i thought ah catania you've been good for us we'll let you take him on because this is a team that had as become really good and i have a lot of love for catania as a result of that We've also brought in some new staff members. Victor Batista has joined us as a loan manager, our first ever loan manager, which is kind of nice, to say the least. Got a lot of hope for this guy to do well for us. And, I mean, his judging ability and potential is pretty good, as well as analyzing data. A lot of things to like about this guy. We also brought in Jeffrey Van Overs... I'm just going to call him Jeffrey. We brought in Jeffrey as a physio. He's good. He's got 20 out of 20 in ability. So, yeah, makes sense to bring him in. Craig Reynolds has also told me bought in as a physio. He joined from our growth. He's pretty good at his job. So we thought might as well bring him in. Also, more professional. Love that. We must bring in Chris Davis as a scout to help us expand our knowledge. We've got all of Wales now. So yay for that, I suppose. He was a chief scout of Wiccan for a long while. But he was also the assistant manager of Leicester and West Brom. Surprisingly enough for a bit. So I guess he was working for Brendan Rodgers. That was surprising to say the least. We also brought in Pavel... Kutcherov as a scout. I don't. I haven't brought him for his ability. I brought him for his knowledge. Russia, Armenia, Belarus, Latvia, Crimea, and Serbia, Kazakhstan, 
Obeskistan, and that's, yeah, he's got all that knowledge. It makes sense to bring this guy in. He hasn't got all the knowledge right now uh, implemented into our system, but that's a lot of knowledge to have, and he was the Rex and Chief Scout for a bit after being the Everton Scout. So it made a lot of sense to bring this guy in for his knowledge alone. So we also brought in Romano de Groot as a performance analysis. We had one of our people leave us, so it made sense to bring this guy in as a replacement. First in question that left us was Jordi Cavaro. He left us to become a recruitment analyst for Napoli. I miss his Nigerian knowledge already. We also brought in Georges and yeah, under 18's physio. Good, good person to bring in for that. Took him from Aldershot Town. We also brought in Donnell Gallagher from Cove Rangers of all places as an under 20's physio. He was their head physio. Good person to bring in. Has some knowledge of Ireland, so. I doubt that would be useful because he's a physio. I mean, look, let's look, let's check. Yeah, absolutely hopeless. But again, it was good to have someone who was really good as a physio to help bolster our under 20s ranks. Yeah, we also brought in some under 18s and under 20s fitness coaches. Lewis was brought in from Stevenage. He was the under 18s fitness coach there. He's not great, but we just brought him for depth. We also brought in Jean Jacques Batiam from what is this team actually? U.S. Belong Lecote. Uh, I, Belong. I'm just going to call him Belong. We just brought him from Belong. Uh, he's got Cameron knowledge as well, which I kind of like. So more knowledge, the better, right? And also cover in the fitness coaching style of things. So now looking at world knowledge, we've got 40% of it. Yes, I can't like, believe I got 40% of the world knowledge now with all our staff. But again, we've got a lot of people that's been brought in. We've got some knowledge that still haven't come in and been finalized yet. I mean, look at this, Antonis who's Greek, has still got not all his knowledge to come through yet technically, so some of the knowledge that we've got still to come through as well as Pavel's knowledge as well, so once everyone gets all the knowledge to come through, it'd be very, very useful to have, to say the least. And then again, we're very, very good, and I just like to have the knowledge in our possession. We also took on Vicenza in the Coppa Telefer qualifying round, where Galadi got a goal in his debut for us. Good, good stuff. The centre now a third tier team, which tells you how bad they've fallen in the recent times. But we make it 2-0 after Pignari scores his first of the season with that effort with the 59th minute of the game. And then Oliver scores his penalty for his first of the season to continue his record of extending his impressive tally of goals for us. That's his 160th goal for us in all competitions. I think he can get 20 goals again. I hope he can get 20 goals again because I do not like the idea of slipping up. Looking at this, we've got Palmer in the next round who... We beat in our last encounter, but we lost to them in our first ever game in Serie R. So again, it'd be nice to get revenge on them, right? Talking about Serie R though, we are a bit addicted to fish bottom of the table, despite the fact we finished in 10th place last year. Again, we're not buying players. Everyone else is buying players. Our team is just progressing due to the age and due to how young everyone is. Rossi is understandably the hot prospect of the team now, being 16 and already as good as he is. Fazalico is our best player right now which is staying a lot, and look, Pignari is now officially listed the projected lineup, which is very, very promising. We have Udinese first and foremost, we beat them twice last year, so I'm hoping we can beat them again. I don't know what to expect from this upcoming season, to be completely honest with you, but again, I don't mind the idea that we literally could be finding ourselves in a difficult situation. The idea that we can get Europe in football, at least close to that last year, was still an achievement on our part. I don't think we're going to win this year any much more than we did last year. And looking at our run of fixtures, we don't really have a run of form, like a run of games, apart from maybe October. Actually, October and November could be difficult just for run of form. Now you've got the inter Napoli games in between each other, next to each other, down here as well. That could be a difficult run of form. And actually February as well as March could be very difficult for us. So maybe about four months of games, we could have really bad runs of forms because of the teams we're facing. I just want to survive. That's always been the aim. And as long as we are predicted to be in the bottom three, our aim is just to survive. And looking at our team detail, we are spending the least amount of money in the league. Just 10.95 million. I could always spend more than that, but you've had to spend 248 million right now on everything. And we are one of the teams that are rich. We are just trying to improve our facilities. We're trying to improve everything else. And if we can get as many facilities as possible to the maximum, improve our finances we could be very very good even if we were to go down i could see us still being kept on either way because we've done so much for the club already that for me is the important part here as galadi has signed a three-year deal because he had interest in other teams 
which is very, very useful. He's scoring his debut for us, for goodness sake, and he's going to start this next game too because Kaluki's injured. And Bondi is going to be fit. He had a food poisoning issue, but I think I might not start him anyway just because, you know, he's not fully fit. And who can I bring him in for? Who can I bring in for him? Not really anyone I can bring in for him, sadly. I mean, we could bring Luigi in for him that side, but I don't want to justify... You know what? We could do this. Hang on. Let's do this. Bring you in. We're going to bring... We're going to start Basenti instead. He's good. He's got potential. We can do this with the bench too, which is why I love this situation where I got so many good hands on the bench. So our starting lineup is going to be this. Basilica starts. Barbini's on the right. Alberti and Gallardi in the middle. And the centre-back, Dibiasi, will start on the left. I mean, Gallardi, he's not amazing, but he's better than what we have. And he's also a model citizen, so... He's got so much room to grow. If he doesn't develop, I've done something wrong with him. That's all I'm going to say. We've got Fantosi and Conte stand in the middle of the park. We've got Luigi Lucchini can play on the right-hand side. He's very good. He's Yes, he's left foot. He's right foot as well. So he can play the winger and he's an inverted winger. And he's a forward. So he's the perfect player for this such situation. But Santi will start his first game since his broken foot. So hopefully he doesn't get another broken foot. Because that injury scares me now after having broken his foot against Sampdoria. And he literally just came back after the season ended. Pigneri can start on the left-hand side because he can play in that position. So Pacente Pigneri can play on the same time in the same pitch, which is very, very useful to say the least. And we've got Jack Oliver who will start this game as a striker. Apparently he's now only considered a good Serie B striker, which is a bit concerning. But given that he's got 148 goals in 240 matches, I'm not going to be too concerned at the end of the day. Let's see what we can do though. And let's see if we can get all three points against Udinese because I want to win this game. I really want to win this game. If we don't win this game, then, well, we'll have only won four times in our first 50 matches at the first game of the league campaign. Not a record I'm proud of, but it would be nice if we can break that duck, wouldn't it? We've got to throw a best to take it. And this could be very, very useful as Luigi tries to get to it. And Conte's got to that. Apparently, it's Conte scores this goal. I don't know how he's got to this, but he has. And that is his 12th league goal for the club, but... How on earth has he gone to this? Oh, he's all, he's ahead of Oliver. Interesting. I didn't think he got to that, but okay. Fair enough. One nil already. Okay, so we've got... they got a free kick now. They're going to try and play in the middle. And... Oh, that's a close effort. I thought that was going in. I really did. They got to have a free kick and PSE would take it. And it's been... Oh, my days. They're getting closer and closer. I'm scared. we got a free kick now. Luigi would take it. It's a good free kick in. And Oliver puts it over now. Chances for both teams in the first half, and that's annoying that we're missing ours, and they're also actually having the chances. But again, we get the ball back from their goal kick. Pignani on the ball, who's got pace. Conte, Basenti. Oh, that would have been a good ball if I'd have got to that, but he didn't. It was too too close to keep of anything else. They're going to try and get a, a counter-attack now going, and we should get to this first. We do. Gallardi gets the ball. That's not the best ball forward from him. And we need to get the ball back from them now. And Sergio plays it forward. And Nico will get to this. I'm a bit concerned that Nico's going to have an opportunity to pass it. And he has done. Oh, what a save from Basilico. He should have scored that. That was a stupidly good chance. He's missed it. We need to get second goal. And I'm concerned now that we, because of the highlight side, but Oliver's got the ball back. Okay, Vicente in the ball. He played the ball through. Or we can, yeah, play the ball through. That's a pass on. He didn't take it. But Vicente is still on the ball. Still going. Finds Brazzoni. Finds Bondi. There we go. That's a second goal we needed. There was a pass on early that he's missed it. I, I I felt like there's a pass on for Oliver that he missed a few times. Like there was at least one or two times that he missed an opportunity to do. But he did find Brazzoni who finds Bondi the first time. The two substitutes linking up with the goal. 2-0. Hopefully that's game over. And that's our fifth win in the opening day of the season. In just our 15th attempt. So yeah, that's concerning, isn't it? And that is our first opening day win in Serie A so far. It took us a while to get there, but we got the win. Also, I wouldn't think enough. I'm looking at this now. There's actually our 888th goal. So yeah, we finally got the 188 goals. We're down to sixth place at the moment after Sosuelo beat Frozenone. Sub to Real also beat Genoa. Juventus won 3-0 against Spal. Roma win 3-1 against Fiorentina, who we finished above last year, and has Verona beat Parma. Into one their first game of the season, as did Lazio as well. So we're looking good. And Calculate versus Sampdoria is the other game. But this is a good start. This is a good start of the season. We need to build on this and get more victories. I like to think we can get another victory as the Kaiser Sals and Boss wants to buy Barbini from us. I refuse to sell him, even though he's now 
Why have my players suddenly become only good Sewer B players? I'm so confused. They're not that bad, are they? Surely not. Either way, though, we're going to end this here. I hope you guys have actually enjoyed yourselves. Hope you guys like and share this video and that you will subscribe to my channel. It really does help me a lot. Let me know where you think we can finish this season and what you think we should be aiming for for the rest of the year. Either way, though, take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.